have this old Subaru Rosen slash Valsi generator. So this is uh, optimistically rated at five and a half kilowatts. Uh, it is an EX27 series engine. Maybe it's six and a half horsepower. I don't know. I bought this after Hurricane Ike and uh, really haven't run it much since. And uh, seeing as we've got Hurricane Lauren that looks like it might visit Houston, I might actually need it. And I thought, you know, today is a good time to mess with it. So first things first, let's give it a uh, air bath and get all this dust and crap off of it. More than likely we have a bad, well not bad, but a clogged carburetor. And so I'm gonna work on that today. Um, I did lift it up here. My back will punish me later. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, give it some air. I've got a, uh, this is probably 150 PSI. -er. So, you know, I may not do this quite right because I honestly don't remember how to do this. Although I'm pretty sure. Ah, yep, yeah, that's right. Oh, lovely. Let me get a glove. That was a filter. I'm gonna get some um, nuts and work on getting this off here. All right, so this is a 10 millimeter. So there is a bolt on this side that holds this sorry excuse for an air cleaner down. And then I think the rest of this is part of the front of the carburetor. So, 
that is just foul. The air works better when it's on. Alright, so that's clean, and I've managed to salvage this intake gasket. So, now let's get the and see what we're dealing with here. Alright, so the fuel line is coming in right here. There's a little pump. Uh, bowl, and this should just pop off. That's our... Um, let's just pop this off, alright. So that's our throttle. Or in the case of a generator, it's a governor. So we've really just got this clip. What we're dealing with is right here. It's this little clip. And, you know, this actually seems to be pretty well designed in terms of serviceability. There's some Japanese stuff that if you're not a gremlin, you're not getting in there. spring here that I didn't see before. Alright, let me get something for that real fast. Wouldn't you know it, the frame is in the way. Not by a small amount either. So let's see. What we're... All right. So let's just take the bowl off and see how bad this is. If we're going to try and fix this, or if we're just ordering a new carburetor, that doesn't look good there. the studs as a there we go so the way this comes off is you just tilt it that way and that way this is going to be gnarly as in nasty but we'll see Ooh, that is not looking good <laughs> yeah, honestly, I thought we drained this, but apparently not. what 
that was, but it's pretty skanky. Alright, that's pretty disgusting. And that's not looking much better, whatever it does. Uh, let's see. So our jets are here and here, and our needle valve is there. And honestly, I think this thing can be just blown out and put back together. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, it would be really nice if I had a new piece of rubber for here, because this is looking pretty darn shot, but I think we can still make it work. Start with some starting fluid. And I'm only using starting fluid on the metallic parts because it's an aggressive cleaner. Move to carb cleaner. in there is eating the gloves.
decided to dunk the bowl and the metal parts in some sea foam and try and get the rest of that varnish off. Right. So this is the second batch of sea foam and uh, the vast majority of that nastiness is out of there so I think we're done. Uh, let me show you what else we got. We've got these are pretty darn clean. I mean, this is this is looking like a different carburetor, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it back together. After I get this back here. So, oh yeah, we want to fish this out of here. Probably shouldn't dump that down the drain, but I really don't know what else to do with it. Alright, that's looking pretty good there. Take some Dawn. Out of this, I'm going to use compressed air. All right, yep, that was a little strong. Pretty sure that's uh, dry now. So I want to do one other thing here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. This should... Alright. Alright, so now we're going to put this back together. This is our main jet, and I'm pretty sure it's clear, but I'm going to hold it up to the light and look. I don't know, I'm going to go blow it out. I'm sure I can hold on to it, so I'm going to put it in here first. And then I'm going to blow it out and hold it with the carb because I know I can hold on to the carburetor. Alright, so that's our main jet. Let me go blow it out. Alright, so you won't be able to see this, but now I can see through it, so I know that that jet is clear. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my float and my meat, my needle valve. This lets the gas in. And 
end. Alright, yeah, I thought we had a problem there. We don't. So, this should be in here, like that. And then, we'll just kind of hold on to this and stick this together upside down. Alright, and then this just goes in here like this. Alright, so that's nice and clean. That's so much better than it was. And then let's see if we can figure out how this goes. Yeah, I think that's right. Now, I would like to have had parts for this, but I don't really have time to wait on parts, so we're just going to see if we can make this work, and hopefully we can. Now that's not even nearly done. We need to get this in here so we can tighten it down. And this shouldn't be that tight, so we'll just... There's a rubber gasket in there and that's good. This is a McCuney carburetor. It is an 0535 type. Not 100% sure what that means. This is the fuel metering inlet. That's the on-off valve. I don't know which one's which, but let's go ahead and put it back together and see what happens. Now, unfortunately, this tank is really nasty on the inside, so we'll have to do something about that. But first, let's get this reinstalled. So, I'm going to position the camera there, because I think you guys can see what's going on. This needs to go, but it really needs new fuel tubing. So let's take this off. So, back to the So, first we need to reattach this. There we go. And then that can come in. Okay, so 
this is basically ready to go except that I need to replace this fuel tubing and if I can find it I need another one of these but the big thing is I got a tank full of nastiness so I'm going to leave this off for a minute I need to put another filter in here this first thing I need to do is get this tank out so I can flush it So let's go ahead and just get these off. and do is get this out. What a clusterfuck. So apparently it doesn't just lift out. Nope. All right. This will. So first things first, let's go ahead and get this hose off. This hose is shot anyway, so I need to get some more hose. I think the filter is still actually doing its job. I'm not 100% sure what to do with this, but I have an idea, so hang on. We're going to dump it into an oil catch bin, though. Well, it 
doesn't really want to come out, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm, why not? So we'll just let that drain out. That's nasty. All right, there wasn't very much in there, so we're gonna rinse it with with acetone. Ooh, nastiness. Let's see what we got in here. Yeah, it's not bad, but I want to rinse it a little more. So let me get some more acetone. All right, I ran acetone through here a couple more times. I've got the majority of the crap out that's going to come out. And uh, um, I've got the valve dunking in acetone, trying to dissolve the stuff that's in there. I don't, I don't think that's salvageable, but we'll see. And I might actually be able to read. Yeah, I can read the gauge. All right, so let me put this back. in an ordinary world, but the reality is by the time I get this back together, it won't matter. All that acetone will have evaporated right out of there. So at this point, what I want to do is just focus on getting it bolted back together, and then I'm going to go hunting for the valve and the other parts.
Okay, so all we've got left is this. Let's see if we can get that adapter out. Nope. Nope, that thing is frozen, stuck. Alright. So I ended up taking it apart and using a drill bit to clean all the gum out of this side. And it's a really simple valve, so um, I think if I put it back together, it'll be it'll be okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything to it. So let me go do that. So that that works. Yeah, I can't cut it off but um, it, it'll be okay. It just needs to flow fuel and um, it's not ideal but I'll find something to replace it. I'll, I'll get an inline valve that works seal it with this. This stays uh, flexible and it's vibration resistant. I'm not sure if this is the right stuff, but I think it will work. It's an M10 by one thread, and uh, it's a real coarse thread going into the tank. That's it for now. Alright, so I went to Advance Auto, they had this exact part, and um, they didn't have the fuel hose, but O'Reilly did, it was like 5 bucks. So all I said it was like $16 to recondition the fuel lines. Um, I found this generic little shutoff valve for 16 or for 5 bucks, and the fil fuel filter was about 5 bucks as well, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with that, and you can see it's the exact same filter. So let's, uh, first things first, we're going to extract these little hose clamps because there's really nothing wrong with them and we can reuse them again.
And then, you know, there really isn't anything wrong with this, but might as well replace it because um, I don't have time for fuel leaks. Okay. So, first things first, let's uh, cut off a little piece of this. And it was quarter inch fuel line. So I'm putting a quality Gates hose on here. I'm real happy with that. Now, when this originally was put together, um, it was done before the tank went in because it wasn't aligned. Okay, so that's in there. So now that gives me a way to turn off and turn on the fuel. And now we need to get this under here. So we'll just go ahead and slide this in. So, unfortunately, I just can't see well enough at that distance. When you get old, your eyes suck. So, enjoy it while you're young. Hell if I know where that went. Hopefully that doesn't turn out to be something that was important. So that isn't, this isn't going quite the way I was hoping it would, but we will eventually get there. It's just a clearance and angles issue. There we go. Alright, so now let's push that back in. Let me stop and figure out where that went. All right, so that hose clamp is still a wall, so we're going to just press on. I 
I think this is just a little screen. Yeah, that's all this is. But that's fine. I mean, you just need a little screen to keep the crap out of the carburetor. So, probably costs about 12 cents to make and sells for $6. But that's what enables me to keep them on the shelf. So, now we need two hose clamps. Let me see if I can figure out where they went. Alright, so these were a buck a piece, which is outrageous, but uh, hey, I have them, so. go. So, all that's left at this point is to put the, car, the uh, fuel filter back on. So we'll put this tired gasket back in. clearance issue here with the frame. There we go. So this goes up top. And then these go down here. Looks good, I'll be right back. Alright, the bottom right there next to me, this is going to make my back hurt. I'm going to focus. Don't recommend you try that at home. It will make your back hurt later. But, as usual, I'm working by myself and we get stuff done. off. 
So what we're going to do is put a little bit of gas in. Funny story, I've had these since Ike. Bought them from Granger and paid dearly for them. Oh, let's see. What I like about them is they have start stop. They're actually really good gas cans. So all we want to do at this point is put enough gas in here to fire it over and make sure there aren't any leaks. Looks like I broke off a button. Not a big deal. something to work as a fuel filter but uh, the good news is the generator works and that carb rebuild was successful so we'll go ahead and turn off the fuel and then we're going to run it dry
gas out of the carburetor. So, anyway, I was telling my friends on Facebook that, you know, Murphy's Law says if I got this generator running, the Hurricane, Hurricane Laura will not cause a power outage. So, we'll see. And uh, if it does, then Murphy 0, Brian 1. But normally Murphy's always right, and that's why we prepare for him. If I hadn't gotten this running, we would have lost power for sure. So, hopefully we won't lose power, and I won't need this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.